the brush menu in the main menu bar contains the following operations. Now, before I actually start going over these, I want to let you know that I'm not going to be talking too much about the actual BSP functionality. That's something that we're going to save for a future video over world geometry and additive versus subtractive levels. What I'll be doing here is showing you exactly what these commands do and nothing else. So for starters, we have the add command. And to show you what that does, we need the red builder brush, which I already have on the side of my level set to a 256 cube. And I'll drag this into my map, just maybe kind of over here toward the wall, like so. And I'm going to go under brush and choose add, and voila. Now let's move the red builder brush out of the way, and it looks like we have a block of mass, which has just been added to the map. Let's go ahead and demaximize the viewport, and let's take a look at what we have, say, in the top view. So I'll maximize the top view for us. And we have a blue box that has been added to our map. In fact, I can show that to you in perspective as well. So let's jump over here into perspective. We can actually see it selected now. Or if I go over to brush wire frame mode, you can see that. Now, what does a blue uh, box mean, Logan? Well, that's an additive brush. That's right. So that means that we have added this uh, mass into our level. So let's go back over to lit mode so that we can see that. And let's move on to the next command, which as we move down the uh, brush list is subtract. And again, to show this off, I need to use the red builder brush, which is kind of our key to all of this uh, demonstration. And to really drive this home, I'm going to take my red builder brush and carefully place it so that it's partially sticking through the wall. So if you take a look here inside my perspective view, you'll see that it's uh, touching the wall, but it's kind of poking out through it as well. And let's go under brush and choose subtract and check out what we've done. We've actually carved a hole into our wall, like a little recession. So let's go ahead and expand that. You can have a quick look at that. But it's not necessarily like we've actually carved out geometry. Technically, what we have done is we have created a subtractive brush. And if I move the red builder brush out of the way, we can see that as a uh, yellow highlighted brush. All right, moving down the uh, brush menu from here, we have intersect and de-intersect. And these are both commands that allow us to perform a Boolean operation on the red builder brush. And it's going to behave in two different fashions based on uh, whether we want to respond to, uh, to solid geometry or to additive geometry or negative geometry. Now, to really make that make sense, I'm going to move my red builder brush so that it runs partially into the corner of this uh, blue additive brush that I've created. And we're going to slide it down a little bit. So if we take a look here inside of an expanded perspective view, you can see how these two brushes are kind of running through the corners of one another. And if we go under brush and choose intersect, take a look at what the red builder brush just did. It now exists entirely within the space where these two brushes intersected each other. Right, so it's almost like the result of the intersection has now is what the builder brush has become. That's right. So only the areas where the two brushes intersected remains. That's right. So if I move the red builder brush out of the way, I could go back under brush and choose add again, and I've created a new additive brush that is the exact same volume that those two objects had where they were both touching each other. Right, and of course, if you would subtract it from that, then you would subtract just that, that piece by itself. Exactly right. So let's go ahead and set the red builder brush back to its uh, default settings of a 256 cube, and I'm going to slide it over to the opposite corner of this cube, and I know things are getting a, a little bit interesting to see because we have uh, gray on gray. Maybe I can change that a little bit. Let me go ahead and take my show flags, and uh, we'll kick sprites back on, and what I'll do is I'll start deleting a couple of lights to give us a little more contrast. There we go. So that makes things a lot easier to see. So now uh, the red builder brush is running through the opposite corner of this big uh, central block we have here. And what I'm going to do is go under build, I'm sorry, under brush, excuse me, and we'll choose de-intersect. And now take a look at what the red builder brush has done. If you can't really make it out, let me go ahead and add this into the level. So brush, choose add. And now our brush is missing that corner where our additive brush was intersecting into it. Right, it's almost like the exact operation of intersect, where intersect only left the area that was the intersection. Instead, de-intersect leaves any part that is outside, basically any part that's in negative open space. That's right. the only part that will remain. If you're familiar with Boolean operations, this is kind of like a Boolean subtraction. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and move our red builder brush out of the way, and I will click on the box button again to bring it back to a standard 256 uh, by 256 by 256 cube. Now moving down from here, we have add mover and add special. Neither one of these options actually function here, so we're going to completely ignore them. We can import a brush. So if we have saved out a 3D model in T3D, D, uh, DXF, 
ASC or ASE format, we can bring those in. And there's already one in here. We have wall.ASC, which is, uh, what is it? It's ASCII scene, some, I don't remember what it stands for anymore, but if we uh, go ahead and choose that, let's go ahead and just make sure solid mesh is activated and click OK, and our red builder brush conforms to the actual polygonal model of wall.asc. So using this method, you could create your own BSP brushes in external applications such as Maya or 3ds Max. Moving down from here, we can export a builder brush. So if we maybe create a builder brush, perhaps with geometry mode, which we'll talk about later, that we really like and might want to use again, we can export that out as a T3D file that we can import back in later if we need it for some reason. And moving down from here, we have the ability to add a volume. Now, before I do that, let me go ahead and set our red builder brush back to a cube just by clicking on the cube button. And I'm going to move the red builder brush over here to this kind of unused corner of the map. And if we come under Brush and choose Add Volume, we get a big, long list of the various volumes that can be added. And we'll talk more about working with volumes a little bit later. For now, I'll just add a simple blocking volume, which if I slide the red builder brush out of the way, it appears as a pink wireframe. And if for some reason we should want to see the various polygons of that, as we saw in another video, or as you can see in another video, uh, we can turn on Brush Marker Polys, and now we can actually see those polygons. So that is a quick look at the various commands of the brush menu.